The Reaper is the second class added to Backpack Battles, and has been a popular choice for many players. It differs from the Ranger in many ways, so in this video we'll talk about what makes it so unique, which includes its strengths, weaknesses, subclasses, and items that only the Reaper can use. The Reaper specializes in poison debuffs, which you can see from its starting backpack called Storage Coffin. Whenever an item inside activates, you have a 25% chance to inflict one poison debuff. This debuff deals one damage for every two seconds. So be sure to fill up every slot in here with as many different items that activate as possible. You also start off with a fly agaric, which also deals a poison debuff. You'll have a dagger too that requires no stamina to use, but has a long cooldown to activate. Nonetheless, I think you get the point that poisons and reapers go hand in hand with each other. Especially when you realize that certain items like the fly, agaric, can only be found in the reaper class. And one weapon that you'll only find on the reaper class is the death scythe. It can deal 6 to 10 damage with a net stamina usage of 1.4 due to its high stamina requirements. Its item effect can inflict double the poison effect of other poison inducing items. There's no such thing as too much poison with this class. The Demonic Flask is another Reaper specific item that does 0.3 damage for every debuff your opponent has once their HP drops below 50. This item is truly deserving of its godly rating during the endgame when fights can last a lot longer and give you a chance to stack even more debuffs as you can see on the screen. This item can combine with both a Magical Staff and Lightsaber. The Magic Staff will turn into a Staff of Unhealing which can heal for 10 every 1.8 seconds as well as use 5 mana to heal an additional 4 more and for those 2 seconds the healing does damage in the process as well. Which is insane since this item only requires 1 stamina to use but has no attack damage potential. The flask can also combine with a lightsaber to make a dark saber. No 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 not that one, this one. Man Star Wars loves creeping into my videos. Nonetheless these are the stats of the dark saber. Its item effect can deal 0.5 damage for each debuff stacked on your opponent. And using just one mana on attack can deal one blind debuff as well. Now let's talk about deck of cards, which is the only way to get cards in the game. So all cards in general are reaper specific, and they can be amazing, like the ace of spades, which gives out luck and spike buffs. Dark lotus that grants tons of mana. Hollow fire lizard who can deal damage and give out heat too. The lover still life in addition to giving regen. And there's white eyes blue dragon. Yes, white eyes blue dragon. Good job to the devs for dodging those Yukio Sis and Deceased orders. Regardless, this card can stack armor and deal out a cold debuff. And let me not forget to mention that the Hollow Fire Lizard can combine with the Ruby Whelp to make a Ruby Chonk, which is just a faster and stronger dragon pet that can attack at range. And I know this might be surprising, but we're not even done yet with Reaper only items because we haven't even mentioned Poison Goobert, which you can get by combining the Fly Argic and the normal Goobert. This bad boy can cleanse and inflict poison at a pretty fast rate. And lastly, you can use the poison goobert with the steel, light, blood, and regular goobert to make a rainbow goobert omega goose prime slime. I guess the devs love watching XQC because that's definitely a name that I can see him coming up with. Nonetheless, this might be the best item in the game because it can heal for 20, gain 20 armor, get two vampiric buffs, inflict four blinds, and four poison debuffs as well as give four plus damage to weapons we can definitely tell that the devs like the reaper class a bit more than the rangers with all these reaper specific items and i haven't even gotten into the subclasses yet the first one we'll talk about is mr struggles many people say this is the weakest out of the three options you can choose but that won't stop me from climbing to grand master with it Nonetheless, this item can inflict fatigue damage for every 2.5 seconds, as well as have a 25% chance to inflict the same debuff your character gets hit by. This means if you're getting hit by a ton of cold debuffs, there's a 25% chance that you'll place the same debuff on your opponent. Basically a mirror reflection ability where you still get hit by the attack, but can still punish your opponent. Also during fatigue, Mr. Struggles will trigger any star item it's touching to act 100% faster. Overall, we can say Mr. Struggles gives you a chance to fight fire with fire. Next, we have Nocturnal Lock Lifter, which is a vampiric item that lets weapons steal 20% of life, as well as enhance healing by 25%. Your poison debuff also steals through vampiric. Nocturnal Lock Lifter is a true definition of being a vampire, which rewards you for being aggressive by supplying you HP with attacks. Next, we have the Cursed Dagger, which is all about that action. 
It can deal damage similar to that of a regular dagger, but its item effects drastically sets it apart. When you stun an enemy, you can trigger an extra attack. And when you actually hit an opponent, you can inflict two random debuffs. And plus every star item that it touches will have an increase of 1% accuracy and crit chance per debuff your opponent has, which makes this subclass a great choice for endgame. With all the things we mentioned, you can definitely say the Reaper class lives and dies by debuffs. Poison is its go-to, but items like Deck of Cards can open the door to slows, which can drastically turn the tides of any battle. So try your best getting items that can help you stack debuffs and play to the Reaper's strengths. With that being said, let's move on to areas where the Reaper may be lacking. One of which is that it starts off with less room than the Ranger, which can make early game tricky, but you can beat any Ranger in the beginning if you mid-max correctly. Another weakness is cleansing items like Book of Light, Carrots, Holy Armor, etc. These items can be the bane to any Reaper's build and ruin any chance of winning. And now for the subclasses, I personally like using Mr. Struggles, but there's a lot of builds that can blitz you before Fatigue can even activate. If you do plan on using this item, I recommend stacking a lot of healing and armor. Keep in mind that some of the glass cannon builds can bypass armor, so healing and regen is nice too for endgame. The Cursed Dagger is great if you have the right weapons paired with it. Items that can attack fast. It can even make the Reaper weapon somewhat viable. But that's if you're a gambling person and want to roll the dice. Nocturnal Locklifter is another great choice if you plan on running a sustained build filled with Vampiric and Regen items. I highly recommend trying to get Vampiric Armor with either a Bloody Dagger or Blood Harvester. Shoot, even both if you can get them. But just remember that you can make long runs with any builds as long as you plan your loadout correctly and have the right items triggering each other's items effect. Take time to experiment with different play styles, find synergies that suit your preferences, and discover your own unique strategy. This is one of the many reasons that make backpack battles so great. No two runs will be exactly the same. So use each run to think of ways to improve your core build. Or you could just troll all you want to Diamond or even Grandmaster, which is why I'm still determined to make Mr. Struggles work deep into high ranks, despite the nerfs recently placed on it. I enjoy seeing my debuff stacks to ridiculously high numbers on opponents and crafting builds with the purpose of making it to fatigue is fun for me. It's like I get to be Esquinor in his D1 mode from Seven Deadly Sins, except I get to be ridiculously OP at night rather than at noon. Nonetheless, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And also comment down some tips that can help new players as well. Till next time, y'all stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next backpack battle video.